Hello and welcome. My name is Meepolis, they, he, she. And today's pick is Cigarette Girl by Masahiko Matsumoto, with a forward by Yoshihiro Tatsumi, and translated by Spencer Fankut, with assistance from Atsuko Saisho. This volume collects slice of life short stories, originally published between 1972 and 74 originally published in Japan in 2009, Top Shelf translated and published it in English in 2016. Content notes, arranged marriage, nudity, smoking, cheating, and sex. Scrolling through Wikipedia, Masahiko Matsumoto was born in Osaka in 1934 and died of cancer in 2005. Inspired initially by Osamu Tezuka, Matsumoto's work in alternative comics was in turn influential in the formation of after the completion of his autobiographical manga Gekika Bakutachi in 1980, Matsumoto focused his creativity for the rest of his life on paper cutting. What kinds of keywords came to mind reading this compact volume? Romance, relationships, parents, sales, community, pets, panties, and eating. The summary is, quote, Welcome to the quiet, evocative urban dramas of Masahiko Matsumoto, one of the leading lights of the Japanese alternative comics movement known as Gekiga. Originally published in 1974, these 11 stories now form the first English-language collection of Matsumoto's mature work. His shy, uncertain heroes face broken hearts, changing families, money troubles, sexual anxiety, and the pressures of tradition, but with a whimsy and lightness of touch that is Matsumoto's trademark. With a new introduction by Matsumoto's well-known colleague, the late Yoshihiro Tatsumi. End quote. Looking at the art, I actually found it pretty charming. Matsumoto's caricatures felt like they were extensions of the unassuming characters he was writing about. Distinctly un charismatic. The line quality and panel framing were all very crisp and communicated the story well. Writing-wise, these short slice of life stories felt very rich and concise, a window into a very different time and place, particularly for us English speakers. Each of the characters felt incredibly distinct, and I felt pulled right into their lives. This book was hard to put down. Looking at the intersections and identities, obviously I am anything but an expert on Japan before I was born, but my impressions are the following. <laughs> Sexuality was very one note, aka heterosexual, but the most central theme connecting each of the short stories. Many of the characters are looking for new sexual relationships, and some are hitting roadblocks in their sexual relationships. One story involves a woman getting an abortion, and I appreciated the matter-of-fact tone Matsumoto seemed to take over the choice. Class is perhaps the thing I'm guessing the most at, but as I've already noted, the characters felt very unassuming and perhaps of limited means. Work features prominently in most of our characters' lives, and the opening story features an unemployed fiancé. Gender didn't feel particularly explored. We have men, we have women, both felt fairly well rendered. Discourse around or representation of disability and racial diversity felt the most lacking. Wrapping things up, as you may have guessed, I did find this read extremely interesting. Four stars. Separated by about a decade, I still couldn't help thinking about Talk to My Back by Yamada Murasaki, which I would recommend to anyone who is willing to pick up a book about a housewife in 80s Japan. So good. Bye, y'all. Keep reading and stand with striking workers. And Literally Graphic is created on land that should be given back to the traditional landholders, which in this case is, to my knowledge, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, an Anishinaabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation.